In the past, you might have heard an informal definition of continuity. Something like a function is continuous if you can draw it without ever picking up your pencil. In this video, we'll develop a more precise definition of continuity based on limits. It can be helpful to look at some examples of functions that are discontinuous, that is, functions that fail to be continuous, in order to better understand what makes a function continuous. So please pause this video and try to draw graphs of at least two different functions that are discontinuous in different ways. One common kind of discontinuity is called a jump discontinuity. A function has a jump discontinuity if its graph separates into two pieces with a jump in between them. This particular function can be described as a piecewise defined function with two linear equations, f of x equals 2x when x is less than or equal to 1, and negative x plus 2 when x is greater than 1. Another common kind of discontinuity is a removable discontinuity. You may have encountered these before when you learned about rational functions with holes in them, like for example, the function f of x equals x minus 4 times x minus 3 squared divided by x minus 4, which has a hole at x minus 4 and otherwise looks like the graph of the function x minus 3 squared. This kind of discontinuity is called removable because you could get rid of it by plugging the hole, by defining f to have an appropriate value when x equals 4. In this case, you'd want f of x to have the value as before when x is not 4, but the value of 1 when x equals 4 in order to plug the hole. In this example, our function had a removable discontinuity because it wasn't defined at x equals 4. But you could also have a function that had a removable discontinuity because it was defined in the wrong place at x equals 4. For example, too high or too low to fit the trend of f. A discontinuity can also occur at a vertical asymptote where it's called an infinite discontinuity. For example, the rational function g of x equals 1 over x minus 2 has an infinite discontinuity at x equals 2. Occasionally, you may encounter discontinuities that don't look like any of these. For example, the function y equals sine of 1 over x has a wild discontinuity at x equals 0 because of its wild oscillating behavior there. So for a function to be continuous at x equals a, we need for it to avoid all of these problems. To avoid a jump discontinuity, we can require that the function's limit has to exist at x equals a. To avoid holes, we can require that the function actually has to be defined at x equals a. To avoid the other kind of jump discontinuity, where f is defined at x equals a, but it is in the wrong place, we can require that the limit of f as x goes to a has to equal the value of f at a. Sometimes the definition of continuity is written with just the third condition, and the first two conditions are implied. Notice that these three conditions not only exclude the first two examples, but they also exclude the last two. In the third example, the function can't be continuous at x equals 2 because the limit of the function doesn't exist there. Similarly, in example 4, the limit of the function fails to exist at x equals 0. So what are all the places where this function f is not continuous, and why? Take a moment to think about it for yourself. The function's not continuous at x equals negative 3 because it's simply not defined there. The function's not continuous at x equals 1 because of this jump discontinuity. In the language of limits, that's saying that the limit does not exist. At x equals 2, the limit of the function exists in equals 3, but the value of the function is down here at negative 1. So at x equals 2, the limit doesn't equal the value. 
And at x equals 3, the function's not continuous because, once again, the limit doesn't exist. Notice that at x equals negative 2, even though the function turns a corner, the limit of the function is 2, and the value of the function is also 2. So the function is continuous here at x equals negative 2. The function drawn here is not continuous at x equals negative 2 because the limit doesn't exist at x equals negative 2. Because the limit from the left equals 1 and the limit from the right equals 0 and those are not equal. However, the limit from the left does equal the value of the function at negative 2. And we can write that in symbols. The limit as x goes to negative 2 from the left of f of x equals f of negative 2. The same cannot be said for the limit from the right, since the limit from the right is 0 and the value of the function at negative 2 is 1. Because the limit from the left equals the value of the function at negative 2, we say that the function is continuous from the left at x equals negative 2. By the same reasoning, at x equals 1, the limit from the right, which is 1, equals the value of the function at 1. So f is continuous from the right, but not from the left, at x equals 1. In general, a function f of x is continuous from the right at x equals a if the limit as x goes to a from the right of f of x equals f of a. And a function is continuous from the left if the limit as x goes to a from the left of f of x equals f of a. In practical terms, a function is continuous on the right if the endpoint is included on the right piece, and it's continuous from the left if the endpoint is included on the left piece. In this video, we've looked at some examples of discontinuities, and we developed a precise definition in terms of limits for what it means for a function to be continuous at a point.